Hi guys and welcome to part two of my Shop My Stash video. If you missed the first part, that is where I go through everything that was in my everyday makeup drawer that I used the month before and give you reviews and talk about how that month went with those products. Right now, you are looking at a fully empty drawer, well, mostly empty, outside of the stuff that usually just stays in here day in and day out, mascaras I'm using, etc. But lots of empty spaces that we now need to go shop my stash for. One thing I've done for the last couple of months that I've really personally enjoyed is having a bit of a theme for how I'm picking makeup. So one month I did one trying to pull in all the spring colors, and I did another month where I was pulling in products that I needed to make up my mind about before my declutter series. Last month I actually pulled in one where I felt like it was products that I just hadn't given enough love to yet. So things I had tried and enjoyed, but then they had very quickly gone into my drawers and I just hadn't spent a decent amount of time with them. So I asked you guys in the comments what you guys would want to see for the next month. I had kind of had an idea about pulling an entire brand and just making it, like picking two or three brands and pulling everything I had from those particular brands. And we had some conversations in the comments and we've kind of landed on a couple of things. One, you guys seem to be very interested in a lot of my Korean beauty products, number one. And then two, I had a couple comments from some people saying, pull some brands for things that maybe don't get talked a lot about on YouTube. So let's skip Urban Decay and Anastasia and NYX and L'Oreal and let's maybe pull some brands that don't get a lot of love and focus on those. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull all my Korean products in first and then kind of see how we're sitting and then pull in brands that just don't get talked a lot about on YouTube or maybe Instagram quite as much and pull those in as well. If I look at everything we pull and I feel like I'm missing a particular category, I'm making this up. I don't have a bronzer that meets any of those criteria. I'll grab something else, but I'm fairly calm Confident, we can probably find a good drawer of fun things to play with this next month that fit those kind of two categories. So let's go ahead and get over to my drawers and start picking out some stuff. All right guys, so we're now in my top drawer of my Alex 9 drawers. This is usually where we start and this is my blush drawer. So let's go ahead and pull all the Korean beauty things that I have. So the first blush is from Etude House. It is a little matte blush that has this little tiny puff in it. Super cute, really pretty sort of peachy coral color, a lot of fun. So let's pull that in from Korean brand. And then this is, I think, a technically a Japanese brand, um, Majolica Majorca Puff to Cheek, but I picked this up in Korea at a local Korean store um, called Olive Young, which is kind of like, I think their version of Walgreens or CVS. So I think I want to pull this in, even though it's technically Japanese and not Korean. That is all of the Korean blushes that I have in here, but let's go ahead and pull some other products that maybe don't get a lot of love or attention out there on YouTube land. So one that comes to mind is this one. This is the Jordana Sweet Honey Pup Blush Powder. This is actually a really nice formula. It's a really pretty orangey color. So I don't feel like this blush formula gets talked about hardly at all. And it's a really, really, really affordable product. So let's pull that in. Another brand that we're gonna pull in is Kiko Milano. So I don't feel like, at least in the US, this brand gets a lot of attention. I have a couple products from them. This is a blush they did for holiday last year called Memorial Biscuit. Um, it's a beautiful satin finish, sort of peachy blush. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous color. So I think I'm gonna pull my Kiko Milano blushes in because that is a brand I don't feel like gets a lot of attention. So I have that one. And then I also have this little duo here that has a pink and more of a neutral color blush. So I think that's good for this drawer. The rest of these I feel like get a decent... So this just happened and knocked it off the top of my Alex 9 drawers. It hit my stand, it hit my desk, it hit like five things going down and this side completely crumbled. That makes me so, so sad. Uh, and unfortunately it's all shattered all over my carpet. So I'm gonna have to hit pause and go clean that up. I will pull this in this month for this blush, but I'm a sad YouTuber right now. All right, so moving on from that catastrophe, uh, now we are in my highlighter and bronzer drawer. So let's start with bronzers. I feel like I have bronzers from brands that are all kind of usual suspects out on YouTube, Becca and L'Oreal and Makeup Revolution, even The Balm. So I don't necessarily look at these brands and think, okay, there's a brand that doesn't get talked about a lot with maybe one exception. And let's pull this in. I mean, it's not like it's an unknown brand, but I don't think it gets a ton of love and attention. It's the Ulta store brand. So this is their matte bronzer in 
cool. Um, it is actually a really lovely formula, really easy to work with. So let's pull that in. So we'll also check in my face palette drawer and see if there's any other bronzers we want to pull. If not, I'll just plan on using that one. And then I still have my butter bronzer going in my project pan so I can pull that one in as well. Um, let's see, for highlighters, um, I do have one from a Korean brand. This is the Marble Beam Highlighter from the brand called The Face Shop. The packaging is beautiful. And you open it up, it has a little brush that I will probably never use. And then it's got this really pretty pattern to it. Um, it is kind of white when you swatch it out. And I remember this being a very subtle highlight for when I tried it. The Face Shop is one that I kind of think of like the Body Shop. It's kind of like Bath and Body Works that they have sort of more affordable bath products, but then more like the Body Shop, they carry some makeup products as well. So I think this is my only Korean beauty highlighter, if I recall correctly. I had one other one and I think I decluttered it in my declutter series last year, just because I didn't care for the undertone. So we'll pull that in. And then in terms of brands that don't get talked a lot about, um, this one definitely comes to mind. So this is from a brand called Nobby. This I got up on the Shop Hush website. I had never heard of it before Shop Hush. It is a really pretty uh, light champagne gold highlight. It is a baked formula and it feels kind of now it feels kind of creamy, but it definitely has that more stiff baked texture, but it's definitely one you can build up quite a bit as well. So that is a brand that I don't feel like anyone talks about. In fact, I bought it because I had never heard of it. To be honest, I would have pulled this in, but this was just my, in my highlighter uh, shop my stash just last month. So Pop Beauty is another brand that I don't feel like anyone really talks about, but I did swatch that one and talk about it in my kind of review from last month. Um, as far as other highlighter brands, I feel like there are mostly brands and things that people talk about, even products from Essence or J-Cat. Um, I do have this one from Ulta Beauty, but I feel like I've just pulled two whitish highlighters, so I don't necessarily wanna pull a another one. So let's go ahead and stop there. All right, so now we're in my single eyeshadow drawer and then also my cream potted shadow drawer. So a couple things, I don't think I have any Korean beauty singles in here. In fact, I know I don't. So nothing from Korea to pull in here, but a couple of brands that I don't think get a lot of love. Once again, let's pull this in from Kiko Milano. This is a cream potted shadow. This is in the shade 05. I do really like this color. I think it's a really pretty sort of frosted champagne color, hint of pink to it as well. So let's pull this in. So this is from a brand called Mana Kadar. This is the shade Fantasy. This is a brand that I've heard of because I think I got it in an Ipsy bag, but this color is a beautiful rose gold. Do really like the formula on this, but that's a beauty brand I don't think gets talked about at all. So I've heard these talked about a little bit. This is from a brand City Color. This is their Shimmer Shadows. So I have four shades here. Um, I have Ladylike, which is kind of a cranberry color. That could be fun to play with this month. I have the shade Cheers to Life, which is sort of a warm copper color. I have New Year New Me, which is a champagne color. And then I have the shade Sandstorm, which is more of your taupey bronze color. So this is a brand I don't feel like it's, it gets talked about sometimes, but not a ton. So that'll be a good thing to pull in. All right, next door down here, I have all of my liquid cream, sort of pencil sticks in eyeshadow form. Um, let's see if there's any brands in here that don't get a lot of attention. I feel like most of these brands are brands that you guys have heard of, Catrice, Hard Candy, NYX. Yeah, I don't see it if I have a brand in here that isn't totally well known, although I do have a Korean beauty brand. So this is from the brand Touch and Soul. This is their Metalist Liquid Foil Glitter Shimmer Duo. So that could be fun to pull in. Like I said, the rest of these brands I feel like are fairly well known, but this meets my Korean beauty kind of criteria. So this will come in. These are brow backup products. I'm not too concerned about pulling those in. These are some liquid liners and gel potted liners. Once again, 
I think we're good for this drawer. All right, so here are lipsticks. I have some more high-end ones up the very top, but from brands like Bite and Charlotte Tilbury and MAC, so we don't even need to look at those. As far as this drawer goes, a lot of these are things that you guys are going to be familiar with. Maybelline, Flower, Catrice. This one would be a great one to pull in. This is from Makeup Academy. This is a brand you can find at um, CVS, and I think they it is an abbreviated collection to what is carried in a broader sense overseas in like London and Europe and different places. So this is the shade Coral, and I do really like this color. It's sort of a deeper coral color. Really pretty though, so that'll be good to bring in here as kind of a brand that doesn't get a lot of attention. Another product that comes to mind is this. So this is from the brand Albeit. It's in this beautiful gold metal packaging. Feels really luxe. Albeit, uh, this is the shade Rosewood, but Albeit is a brand that was developed by Anthropology. You can buy them on their website or in their stores in their little curated makeup area. So that is a brand that I don't feel like I hear anyone talk about. And the packaging is absolutely stunning on this as well. Kind of has Charlotte Tilbury vibes to me. So let's pull this in. And then because we've pulled in some other Kiko Milano products, let's pull this in from Kiko Milano. This is their Velvet Passion Lipstick in 315. Definitely gives me Charlotte Tilbury vibes as far as both the formula and the sort of shape of the bullet being more squared off like hers are. This is a beautiful mauve pink. So that will be fun to pull in. And then I feel like the rest of these brands are ones that you guys would know that get talked about, even if this particular shade isn't, the brand does. So I think that's good for this drawer. All right, so now we are in my lip gloss drawer. I also have lip lacquers and some toppers and things in here. One that jumps out at me for sure is this. This is from the History of Faux. This is a Korean brand. It is a clear gloss with gold glitter in it, but isn't this packaging like the most luxe thing you've ever seen? Let's see if I have anything else from Korea in here. I do. So this is from the brand called Clio. Let's set this down. This is their Tension Lip Oil. It's kind of a tinted lip oil. It's a really pretty color. Very sort of like a warm nude there. Let's see if I can figure out what color this is. Ah, 12 Nude Thrill. It has some English printing on it. So that is definitely one that I picked up in Seoul. That'll be fun to play around with. That is it for Korean beauty products, but I do see a couple of lip lacquers down here that I feel like are brands that don't get talked a lot about. So this is from a brand called Noya. I think I got this in a subscription box. It is a really pretty plummy pink gloss. It looks beautiful sheared out, or you can definitely build it up over a lip liner. So I think it's an all natural beauty brand. In fact, it might actually be Japanese now that I think about it. Regardless, let's pull this in. And then this is a lip locked priming gloss stain from Mana Kadar. So similar or same brand rather to that single shadow we pulled. This is just a really pretty nude pink lip lacquer. Really pretty, not sticky at all on your lips. Can be sheared out if you want, but also gives full pigmentation in a glossy form if that is what you are after. So that's a good brand to pull in. So I think that kind of covers us for this drawer in terms of more unknown brands as well as Korean brands. All right, we're in my first eyeshadow drawer, and if I'm being honest, I don't think there's anything in this drawer that fits my criteria to pull this month. These are all very common brands. There's no Korean brands down here, so I feel like these all are things that get talked about on a regular basis. Too Faced, Urban Decay, Anastasia, Tarte, so on and so forth. So let's skip this drawer for this month. One drawer drive is where I keep some of my smaller palettes and then also some of my little quads and things like that. So couple things. Oh, one that comes to mind for sure. This is a little quad from J Manual Beauty. They sell this on HSN. It is a beautiful neutral quad. It looks super boring in the pan, but for some reason, every time I use this quad, I always feel like my eyeshadow looks flawless. I mean, just like, perfectly blended, beautiful everyday nude look. Like I've just been so impressed with the quality of these shadows and Jane Manuel Beauty is not a brand that I feel like anybody talks about. Let's pull this too. So this is Studio Makeup On The Go. I had one of these in there last month, but this is their nude one. And I feel like this is also a brand that if you've got BoxyCharm, you might be familiar with this one because this was included in one of your BoxyCharms. This is their Warm Me Up palette or Warm Up palette, sorry, Warm Up palette. 
I think this would be a fun one to pull in. I really love the cool one that was in there this last month, so this makes some sense to pull in. I also think I may pull this. So I haven't gotten a ton of love out of this since I did it. Inglot is a brand that I don't think is like completely unknown on the internet. This is a palette I built myself because I wanted some more green tones and purples, as well as some neutrals to kind of make these looks all come together. So Inglot is a brand that I feel like maybe it's a little more popular outside of the US, but in the US, I don't feel like it's talked a lot about. So I think this one would be a good one to pill in. And then this last drawer here is actually the best of my eyeshadows. These are more drugstore eyeshadow palettes. And I do have two palettes from Korean brands in here that I do wanna pull. The first is one from the brand Wake Make. It's their 16 color balm eyes. It has some really pretty reds and pinks in there, some neutrals um, and kind of everyday colors as well as some fun pops of color. So we will pull this brand in. And I have one from Clio. So this is their Pro Layering Eye Palette. It has a lot of mattes and some satins in there. This rust shade is absolutely stunning. So it makes them very soft. There's nothing that's super metallic in here. They're all satins and mattes, but this is a really beautiful eyeshadow palette. So let's pull this in. And then the rest of these I feel like are fairly well known. They're stuff from ColourPop and Elf and Milani. I would pull in some of these palettes from Shop Hush website, but I feel like a lot of people talk about these, like they're not unknown from Bad Habit and Face Candy. So, I mean, I don't think these are like the most everyday used eyeshadow palettes out there on the internet, but I also don't feel like it's a brand that is unknown. So I'm looking at what I've pulled so far and I'm, I'm pretty good with that. So let's go ahead and transition over to some of the other drawers here. All right, so now we're looking at the acrylic containers at the top of my Alex 9 drawer. So I know that there's some Korean beauty products in here that I wanna pull. So I'm just gonna kind of go drawer by drawer pull Korean products and then talk about if there's anything else in there that is maybe less talked about, less known out on YouTube land. So inside of this first drawer, I have two Korean beauty products. The first one is that white lipstick there from Hera, but we just had that in my Drew lipstick drawer this last month. So I think I'm going to pull this one um, because this is from that brand, The History of Faux, and it's a beautiful, soft, rosy lipstick that has a really nice sort of balm-like consistency to it. So the rest of what's in here is from Julep, which I do think gets some decent attention out there, maybe not a ton. And then I also have Revlon and Burt's Bees. So I think I'm gonna skip the stuff that's in here. All right, so in this drawer is mostly ColourPop lippy pencils. And then I have one from CYO, which I would pull, but we just had it in this last month. Um, and then I do think Soap and Glory gets a little bit overlooked from a makeup perspective. I think their bath and body products get a little bit more attention. So I think I'll pull that one in. Um, this drawer is more of my lip pencils. So I do have one Korean product in here. This is from the brand the same. This is their Eco Soul Kiss Button Lips. This is a bright, bright, no, 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 I lied. This is their peachy shade. So that is really pretty. So let's pull that in. And then the rest of the stuff in here is NARS and Bite, Nude Sticks, Marc Jacobs, Hourglass, Tarte, all brands that get talked about on the regular. Um, I don't think there's anything in this drawer that I wanna pull. I've got L'Oreal and Essence, a bunch of NYX, more L'Oreal. So that all seems fairly standard. Um, this drawer has one Korean product I do wanna pull in. This is from, I think, Peri Para. Yeah, so this is from a Korean beauty brand called Peri Para. This, this is their Airy Ink Velvet. This is a really pretty mauve shade. I, I have seen this now in my local CVS, which is interesting to me, um, but that one I did pick up in Seoul. In fact, I think I bought just about all of my friends one of these because I really do like this sort of matte, silky texture. Never dries down matte, but just feels really light and almost mousse-like. Next drawer, I'm not even gonna pull out. It is nothing but ColourPop and then one hard candy that I just had in there. In here, I've got Ufra liquid lipsticks, M Cosmetics liquid lipsticks, Bare Minerals, Julep, Jouer. Um, I don't know, man. I, I would have said M Cosmetics, but I feel like she's getting a little bit more buzz out there. So I don't necessarily think that that is a brand that doesn't get talked about. So I think I'm gonna skip this drawer. Uh, this drawer has Huda Beauty, 
the, the balms, Kat Von D, Too Faced, Lime Crime, and then all of my Sephora cream lip stains. Once again, all products that I feel like get talked about to some degree, so don't need to pull those. And then last lip drawer, these are all my Maybelline Superstay Matte Inks. I've got Flower, I've got Physician's Formula, and then I do have this one from Ulta Beauty. This is a product and a brand that once again don't get talked about a lot. So this is their Matte Lip Cream. This could be a nice fall color to have in as well. Yeah, nice and rosy and a little deeper. So let's go ahead and pull this guy in. You know what, I think I'm good. I think I've got enough pulls in here. I've got some really pretty colors. I've got some other stuff in my testing drawer that I'm testing out. Plus I still have my lipsticks that I'm trying to use up through my project use up. So I think that's good for this month. All right guys, so now we're in my face palettes drawer and then this is also where I keep sort of liquid and cream highlighters and bronzers. So I feel like most of my highlighters get talked about out there with maybe one exception. Um, it's at Sephora, but I don't know how well known it is. It doesn't get a lot of love out there on YouTube at least. So this is from the brand Tresique. Um, it is a really beautiful sort of cream highlighter. This is one of their sample sizes, but I think I got this in a, I don't know, Ipsy or BoxyCharm or something. But Tresique is definitely a brand that flies a little bit more under the radar. And then as far as bronzers go, this from Temp2, this liquid bronzer. Temp2 is a brand that was kind of designed for airbrushing, but you can also use this with brushes and sponges to apply. So Temp2 is also a brand that I don't feel like it's talked about, talked a lot about. So let's pull that in. All right, so and now we're in my face palette section. I feel like these are all brands that are well known out there, even if the product may not be. Um, some of the usual suspects from MAC and Tarte, The Rock, Jouer, Fiona Styles, etc. Um, I feel like all of these have gotten talked about. You know, the one thing I might pull in, let's just do it. Um, Fiona Styles doesn't get talked about a lot. That's because their stuff is harder and harder to track down. You can still buy some on HSN. You can still buy some out on a few other websites, but she was an Ulta and she's not anymore. So this was her multi-dimensional face palette. Had some blushes, a couple of highlighters, a bronzer there in the middle. So um, I think Fiona Styles, unfortunately, she got some hype for a while, but isn't something that's talked about a lot out on the interwebs. So I think I'm gonna pull in this palette. Now before we move on to foundations and powders and things, I did want to call out that one thing I think I've been forgetting to do on a monthly basis is to pull in single shadows. So I want to make a point of doing that from month to month and I'm actually building a little nine pan palette. I'm going to use this little one that I think I got in a BoxyCharm um, to fit in nine different eyeshadows. Now these some of them are from brands you might be aware of and some of them aren't. So let's just go through quickly what these actually are. So this one here in the corner is one I depotted that I don't feel like uh, is a brand that anyone ever talks about. So this is from a brand called Prestige Beauty. This is one of their total intensity total intensity eyeshadows in the shade Bewitched. It is actually a duochrome taupe color. So it's a taupe that actually has a green shift to it. And I just think it is so stinking pretty. So I wanted to pull that in. There's also some shades in here from Sydney Grace, used to be Feather River Body. This is one of her matte shadows. This is in the shade Woodland. It's a really dark, deep green color that I thought would be fun to play with. And then this is one of her pressed pigments in the shade Brilliant. It is just that. It is an absolutely brilliant copper color. So pigmented and pretty. This is also from her. This is a yellow, mustard yellow shade. This is the shade Haystack. I just recently picked this one up. And it's a really beautiful sort of mustard color. I thought that was fun. Then the four shades that are kind of up here in the corner are actually the new fall collection from Makeup Geek. And I put them in here because I thought, okay, Makeup Geek is something that it's not an unknown brand, but I also feel like it's not gotten a lot of love lately. I thought this little quad of shadows they released show, hey, ride. Uh, let's see, let's watch that there, which is a really pretty sort of neutral stone color. You have Apple Spice, which is a more muted rust color. You've got a taupey gray color here. Remember, I'm holding out of these. This is called Grunge. And then they've released a sort of teal metallic shade, and this is called Autumn Breeze. 
that is really pretty as well. This last shade is the one from ColourPop because I was just looking for something to kind of round this color scheme out and I felt like I wanted a light gold shade. So that is the shade Just In Time from ColourPop. So it's a nice soft gold shade that I thought would pair nicely with the colors that I have in here. So that's what I want to do every month. I want to take this little Z palette, pull in some shades, and then play around with them and color up with new color combos, kind of build my own palette out of my single shadows. I have quite a few single shadows, so I thought this would be a fun way to play around with more of my eyeshadows. All right, so now we are in my primer and powder drawer. There is definitely some Korean beauty products that I know I wanna pull from here. So this is one from Etude House. This is their face blur, smoothing, pore hiding, tone up primer. It's got a tinge of glow to it, but it's really just, I think, nicely smoothing. And then it's a very light, pinkish color, so it actually brightens up my skin quite a bit. So I think that's gonna be my only Korean beauty primer that's back in here. A lot of these are from brands that I think you guys would know. The Ordinary, Jouer, Rimmel, L'Oreal, Flower, MAC. Oh, this is Korean. That'll be fun to pull in. Dr. Brandt. You guys might not realize this because Sephora's carried it for a while, but Dr. Brandt is carried in all of young, kind of their drugstores over in Korea. And I have not played around with this as much as I wanted to. So that'll be a great second primer to pull in. Then turning my sights to powders, I do have one from a Korean brand in here. This is a fancy, fancy compact. This is from the brand The History of Faux, similar to that lip gloss we just got. It is an absolutely beautiful powder. Um, doing this one-handed because I have to hold this drawer up, it's too heavy. But anyway, beautiful sort of nice powder that has a hint of color to it, but not a ton. So that can get pulled in. And then let's pull this powder in. This is from Besame. This is Snow White. Besame is a brand that gets talked about a little bit. I've heard Emily Noel talk about it, but she's about the only one. This is their Ever After Translucent Pearl Powder. It's got a hint of a pearlish to it, pearlishness to it. So Besame is a brand that does some really interesting products all very vintage styled, but doesn't get a lot of hype out on YouTube. And I think that's good for this drawer. All right, so now we're in my foundation drawer. Um, I do have quite a few Korean beauty products in here because I do feel like this is where you see a lot of Korean beauty brands really start to shine is with their sort of face products. So um, let's pull a cushion compact. I have two from Korea over here. I have one from Misha. This is their magic cushion. And I have another one from a brand called Uhai. Um, this is one that I don't think gets a lot of attention here in the US. So I don't want to pull both of these cushions. So I think I'm just going to pull this one. And then I have a slew of BB creams. In fact, the majority of my BB creams are actually from Korean brands. So let's pull two. Let's pull this one. This is the Holika Holika Aqua Petite Jelly. And then let's also pull this one. This is a Misha BB cream. This is their signature real complex. It's a little more hydrating, I think, than their um, original BB cream, which is in this sort of maroon packaging. So uh, this is definitely a product from Korea that I don't hear talked about a lot. And then let's look at my foundations and see if there's any brands outside of Korean ones that I feel like don't get a lot of love. All right, one that I think doesn't get talked about a lot is a brand called Stellar. They have maybe 15, 20 products out on the Sephora website. But to be honest, I don't hear a lot of people talking about the brand Stellar. I've tried a few couple of products from them, um, but not a ton. So let's go ahead and pull this in. Let's pull this in. So this is from Fiona Styles. This is her matte finish foundation concentrate. I do feel like this product got some love when it came out and I think a lot of people do love it, but it wasn't one that ever got talked about much on the internet. I haven't used this in a while. I remember thinking it was a really nice matte foundation. It didn't leave me dry or creepy looking when it was done. So let's pull that in also. And then in the very back section here is where I keep my concealer sealers. It's really hard to get the camera angle correct so you guys can see in there. I pulled the foundation. Let's actually pull the concealer as well. So this is the Stellar concealer that came out. And then I have one Korean beauty concealer. This is from the brand Laneige. This is their cushion concealer. It has that sort of soft cushiony tip concealer that, that you're seeing on several products recently. So that is my only Korean concealer. And I think with those two, plus the two that I have in there that I'm trying to use up, uh, that should do me. And then I don't often pull products from my facial sprays as part of kind of my planned makeup use. I just reach for them as need be. They're just my bottom drawer. 
But I did want to pull this product because it's from a Korean brand and this is called CNP Laboratory. Um, I think you can find this on Amazon. I did pick this up while I was over in Seoul, but this is their Quick Fresh Vita Ampule Mist. It is actually in sort of an aerosol container. It's a super fine mist on here. I mean, just super light and airy, lovely, but this kind of acts, in my opinion, like a MAC Fix Plus would, um, gets rid of any powderiness or cakiness on your face. So let's pull this in. And then because I wanna see how I actually feel about this, it's been a while since I've used it. This is the Sweet Cotton Sebum Clear Powder in a Mist. There's actually a powder in the bottom of this and a liquid in the top. So you shake this up and then in theory, you can use this product instead of powdering. Or maybe if you need extra powder, you could do that. So I'm kind of curious to see if I could use this to set my foundation. It's been a while since I've used it. I've used probably about, I don't know, two, a third of it, but I'm trying to remember if I ever tried to use this in place of a setting powder on my face. So I think it'd be fun to pull in these two Korean beauty products. All right guys, so that kind of covers us for picking products. I'm gonna go load up the drawer and kind of show you where we stand. All right guys, so here is how everything is fitting in my drawers. I definitely have loaded this face section with quite a few products. And ultimately, as I started putting these in and I realized I had four foundation pulls, I did make the decision to put this Fiona Styles Matte Finish Foundation back. I felt like that felt a little bit better. I've got my face palette tucked back here. Um, I've got some of my liquid and cream products over here this month just because they didn't fit easily in there. I think I've got a nice setup for all of my eyeshadow palettes and then a decent number of lip products. It's not the fullest that drawer has ever been but I feel like it is a decent number still and some really pretty products that will be fun to play with this month. Hi guys, so this is a little add-on footage here. Um, I've already filmed my everyday makeup drawer, but I just went into my local CVS and they had pulled in a ton of different K-Beauty brands. They had a huge display from a brand called The Creme Shop. It was a huge end cap with all these different kinds of products from lip to face to primer to highlight to eyeshadow. The prices were kind of somewhere between $7.99 for a lot of the lip products and $8.99 for some of the powder products. Your foundations were around $18. And then they have a whole bunch of cushion products, bronzers and blushes and highlighters. Those were a little more pricey. Those actually ranged somewhere around $20. I was in the process of editing my everyday makeup drawer and I thought I would pull in the creme shop products that I picked up. I try and keep my everyday makeup drawer to be things that I'm shopping my stash for, but because we were talking about Korean beauty products, I thought it would actually be a great opportunity for me to play with these products in particular and put them into my drawer for the month. So let me show you what I got. The first product I picked up is actually a foundation. So this is their Match Made Luminous Liquid Foundation. I picked up the lightest shade 11. So what was interesting about this particular range to me was that they actually had a pretty decent shade range for Korean beauty. Typically what you see is fair to maybe light, maybe a medium, but mostly it's fair and light shades. These guys actually had some deeper uh, skin tones. Once again, not a huge extensive shade range, but definitely some deeper skin tones that I don't typically see coming out of Korean brands. And this is a true Korean brand, unlike the Korean inspired brand Joya that we've seen pop up at other CVS stores. That brand is actually from Kiss Makeup. This is actually from Seoul. So I picked up the shade 11. It is the lightest shade. I have not swatched this or done anything yet. It might be a little light for me now that I'm seeing it, but the next shade up looked a little dark, so we'll have to see. It feels very creamy and hydrating, but my hand is usually a pretty good indicator for my face, actually. Not always the case, I know, with people, but uh, I am, regardless, I am going to try this, and then if it, this is the wrong shade, I may go back and exchange it for the next shade up. So that is the foundation we will put in. I also picked up the full coverage concealer. So this is their cover story concealer. This came in several shades, including a deep shade. It says it's a magic wand applicator. Okay, so that is kind of cute. Um, this is looking rather yellow through the little smiley face here, assuming that is the color in there. So we will have to see how this works for me. Yeah, that is very, very yellow based. That might be too yellow for underneath my eyes. We will have to see how that blends out. Um, it did look like the lightest shade up from this was gonna be too dark on me though. So 
We will give that a shot. That felt nice and creamy though, I have to say. The other face product I picked up was a blush. Um, this is their Mon Cherie Powder Blush. I looked long and hard at their um, Cushion Compacts for bronzer, blush, and highlight. And at the end of the day, $20, I was just scared to kind of take a risk. This was actually, I think, more like $7 if I remember correctly. So I think thought that was a more reasonable price point. They seem to have a shimmer shadow that would, or shimmer shade rather, that was the next color. And then this just seemed like a really pretty nude rose shade. Feels nice and creamy. Yeah, that seems, that seems really pretty there. I'm actually kind of excited to play around with this. I picked up two lip products. So this is their Lip Lock Liner. I thought the packaging looked really cute on this. Um, it does look like from the top that it's going to be a very, very light shade. It is, when I looked at it in the container, which is really cute. Like, isn't that a cute little pencil, all silver and everything? Um, when I looked at it, it actually appeared to be a twist up uh, that was a little bit of a deeper color than I would have expected. So, oh yeah, that's a really pretty nude. I mean, it's a basic nude shade, but that just felt incredibly creamy. All right, I'm excited to play around with this. This feels really luxe, by the way. It's got a nice weight to it. And then the last product I picked up was a Kiss It Better. This is their Tinted Lip Balm with Vitamin E. They had a liquid lipstick there and they had some really pretty shades, but I just, I don't know, I, I was not feeling another matte liquid lipstick. So I thought picking up a lip balm might be kind of fun. That is cute little packaging there. It's got little lips on it. It says Kiss It Better. So it's sort of one of those like Clinique chubby pencil kinds of things. This is the shade You Okay. And I thought this looked like it might be a really pretty nude. Yeah, it's nice and sheer, but that's really pretty. I bet these two are actually gonna look really nice together. So those are the items that I picked up from the creme shop. They had a ton of different stuff. I had a good 30% uh, off coupon too. So I was actually able to pick up um, all of these products for a fairly reasonable price um, using that coupon. And I think I had like $6 in extra bucks that I was also able to pick up and use. So. I'm pretty excited to play around with these. I don't typically put new products into my drawer, but once again, wanted to get these in and actually play around with another Korean beauty brand product. So that is how we are sitting now. I hope you guys enjoyed this month's Shop My Stash video. Once again, if you guys have any ideas for themes or ideas on how we could do some fun sort of shopping my stashes, I've been trying to brainstorm some fun ideas for ways that we could pull products. So if you guys have any thoughts on how you'd like to see me do some Shop My Stashes, I would love to have see those down in the comments below. I've been writing down all of your ideas and would love to chat with you and brainstorm a little bit on things you think would be fun to do. So I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.